colleagues and listeners, here we are, six of six. We're at the end episode of a, of a six series session with James Wyatt, who's the GM of, of Aero Concept. Um, James, almost there, my friend. Hey, we're on the edge of the boundary. We're almost there. Here we um, are, six out of six. Yeah, and thanks very much. Thanks very much for joining us and, and sharing your comments, your points of view and everything. It's okay. really appreciated, as always. So here we come, the last one, sustainability. Mm. Big word, word that's used an awful lot and a word that people rely on a lot. Um, but what I want to do is want to give it a different slant. So we're not just talking about environment and climate and everything. We're talking about the actual business sustainability itself. And I always like to say to people, rightly or wrongly, the 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 three Ps that I put out are, are people, profit, planning. If people have got the right approach and attitude, businesses will do well and there'll be profit. And if you've got profit, you've got a much easier decision on how to support the planet. If it's out of sync, you're not making profit or the people have got the wrong attitude, you get nothing but conflict and more problems. So for me, the 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 subject I'd like to talk about now to, today as the last one is business sustainability of the future, which also includes the role of airports as well. And um, I think as a positive disruptor now moving forward, airports have got such a huge opportunity to influence the business moving forward. Whether it's having some form of quality or environment or sustainability charter for all of their tenants in their own ecosystem, whether it's to um, support the tenants with better infrastructure, et cetera, whether it's to do with electrification of existing GSC, whether it's to do with, you know, supplying the required power and surge and energy capacities. Because again, people can do as much talking as they like. And if there isn't the capability or the infrastructure there, then you can forget everything else. And um, so anyhow, that's just generally what I'd like to talk about today. So let me just kick it off with how do you see that magical word sustainability being used better moving forward, in and especially now in 2023? Sure. Thank you very much for the introduction and having me back. Great to be here again. Um, yeah, sustainability is a great word at the moment. It's obviously very high on a lot of agendas. It's on it's on CEO tables in various organisations across the industry and, and various other industries as well. That's the way the world is going at the moment um, into, you know, very much into this environmental and, and sustainability uh, topics. Um I think it's a very, very key factor in, in particular for our industry. And I very much liked your opening where you said, you know, it's not only about the environment when we hear the word sustainability, it is very much about business sustainability. And I think um, in an industry that is coming back from, you know, from the worst pandemic that the industry has ever seen, uh, particularly obviously on the passenger side, when we talk about passenger handling, um, then sustainability is obviously extremely key. You mentioned the three Ps, and I would challenge the order that you put them in because you said people, profit, and planning. I would I would put profit at the end because no, James, 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 people, profit, and planet. A planet. Sorry, I thought you said planning. Well, I would call it the four Ps then because I would put in uh, the people as as the number one. And then planning as the second, if the people are planned correctly, they have the right toolkits, then that will automatically come to profit. Um, and then we can talk about what percentage of prof of that profit is then used um, for the environmental side of it and the, you know, and the and the planet. But again, I think we've touched on this in every single episode that we've done in this in this series. It is about the people. So from a business perspective, to be consistently sustainable, it is about the people. It's hiring yep. smartly, having the right people at the right place at the right time. I, I, I feel like I've got voices in my head the amount of times I've said this over the last few months. Um, bringing them in to the organization, training them, giving them the right toolkit, enabling them to, to execute the function for which they've been hired for. And again, making sure it's the right person on the right place, not just having um, somebody on a seat. It's got to be the right quality. And we all know the issues that the industry has faced with layoffs, um, you know, with people um, now being recalled back or organizations trying to get hold of staff and the challenges that they have to, first of all, find people 
let alone find the right people and ultimately then to keep those people. So staff retention is a huge part of sustainability when we talk about sustainability from a quality perspective. Um, and if you can get all of that right, ultimately it leads to consistency and it's the consistency in service and quality that ultimately will lead to your business retention and your sustainability. Because it will, it will if I'm a ground handler, as an example, it will not give the airline the excuse that they could potentially go somewhere else if you're in a if you're in a contract together with them um exactly mate exactly so, so it's all it's all about the people and i talk about planning because planning of the staff and the human factor around it is a is a huge thing people want as people we want stability when we go to work so i want to have a plan of when i'm going to work and i would like that plan um, to be fixed and I would like to have also a degree of flexibility in the case that I need to swap a shift here and there and so on but as a business I need to be able to forecast my planning correctly based on my flight schedule my trucking schedule and then determine what functions within the areas I need to execute I need to have on shift at what time so I need to have my skills matrix for my department. I need to know who is the right person to handle what customer. And for, so from a planning, if I'm a planner as a cargo ground handler, as an example, or an airline, and if I'm doing flight crew planning, as, a, you know, uh, um, as another example, I need to be able to have a software or a solution that enables me to, to do that really effectively, that brings all of the elements together, that outputs something where then the human that receives the roster then has the feeling that it's stable and if we can do that then you know this leads to people being happy which leads them to executing the functions correctly which then automatically enables business retention and business sustainability when we talk about the profits that then comes from that consistency and what that does then for sustainability on an environment perspective, or as you described it, Chris, as as the planet, um, then I think this is this is an interesting topic because if I'm a big corporate organization versus a local organization, then of course my views and values and and perhaps the available capital to spend on that topic might be different. Um, if we talk about you know, um, electric ground service equipment, for example, if I, if I want to buy that, that's one part, then I need to be able to ensure that I have the right infrastructure for that electric equipment. So do I have the right place to store, to plug it in? Do we have the right power surge or the, or the power outage, is it called, where I can plug it in? Does the airport provide that infrastructure if they're providing the cargo terminal? you know, and all of these things. So there's great ideas regarding environmental sustainability and it's and it's really something that, you know, is is being implemented more and more. The biggest challenge I see in that area certainly is 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 making sure that the infrastructure is there to be able to handle it. And I think from an airport perspective and dealing with suppliers, this is where they have to collaborate and really work together um on on those decision points of for example where those charging points could be could they be shared or you know are there different pods around the airport is it per facility you know and so on but um yeah it's um it's a very interesting topic but i always i always smile a little bit when i when i hear people's responses to the word sustainability because i think we're very we're all very much being pushed into the environmental side of it but from a sustainability perspective business wise for me that's the foundation before i can then really commit to something on the environmental side 100 percent, mate that's why the profit has to come before the planet but the thing that the thing that i'm also so how naive people are about this particular subject matter and um, you know, I was reading up on a on a, a group of venture capital um, investors, and they're buying up swathes of land, farmland, you know, and planting fast growing trees so that they can sell them to companies who then put in their in their charters and on their website how they're purchasing trees and carbon neutral and all that. And it's absolute rubbish. And and that in it, that in itself is disrupting the environment. And it's not it's not you know it's not doing the right thing. So as far as clarity and communications as well. You know, I think I think airports themselves 
um, and the carriers that fly in and out of those airports, they've, they've got a, a certain duty of care to be a lot more, a lot more um, informative and clear these things up and just explain to everybody, including the workers on the airports as well, who get carried away sometimes by media or unions or just general public, but just to outline the real facts, you know, so it, you, you can't keep talking about electric vehicles if you haven't got the capacity to recharge them. And, and everything has to be in a certain order. And I think, you know, that clarity and communication transparency is something that would be far, far better than just telling people what they're doing wrong and picking holes in certain individuals or airlines or operators doesn't make sense at all. No, it doesn't. And I, I, I go back to what you said about duty of care, and that's absolutely right. And I would say the opposite of that you, you do see examples of is organisations doing it because they feel that they have to in order to remain competitive, and therefore it becomes a tick box exercise without having that real um yeah endeavor to get really the best out of it and having that you know we're talking about airports here so um having that real community feel of a working group of all the various stakeholders at the airport who are bringing their needs uh, who are bringing their pain points for the business that they run at the airport and then for the you know everybody to work together to come out then with the same solution where where everybody can benefit because in that situation, from my point of view, we're not talking about really competition or commercial things. We're talking about a joint effort to, to do better things within our industry for the benefit of the longevity of the environment and of the planet. Um, and it comes back a little bit what we talked about in the last episode where we said about the ground handler and the airline. And seeing them as an extension, you know, the airline sees the ground handler as an extension of the um, of themselves. Well, working together, having that open, transparent approach, will will only you know pay benefits. And there are some very good examples out there of airports doing that. And there are also some very very bad examples. But let's also remember as well, it's not just the airport authority. Very often, it's the government behind them that also have that big impact, that also provide certain levels of funding and it's linked to government strategies, you know, and so on, versus if the airport is privately or publicly owned, um, you know, and, um, you know, and all these factors. But again, I would just keep it simple and let's, and let's do what makes sense. What makes sense? And this, is di and, and this can be different per location, per airport, per facility, you know, whatever it is. What makes sense? And don't commit to something until the infrastructure is in place that you're then able to execute it uh, correctly. Because otherwise, it just becomes a waste of time. Yeah, stop finger pointing and blaming. And what you were saying there about whether it's government or private, etc., I, I find it's a little bit like a classic song or something that makes everybody happy or, or tap your feet or your fingers. It, it, it can be the Royal Philharmonic playing it. It can be a great modern band. It can be an old country band. It can be people in a pub. Anybody that can play an instrument can play that tune and it will make people feel that they're enjoying it. And I think the same thing comes now from, you know, the airports, the airports being able to create a community storyline, an ecosystem storyline that's credible also educational because everybody needs to actually know it's a it's a subject that's always spoken about you read about it you see it in the on the news and people aren't experts at it so the educational element i think is also good and then that brings a general consensus of ownership and accountability and if people care together then they share they share and care and i think that comes back again to the people and it makes everybody feel a little bit more proud of where they work and why they're doing what they're doing and to understand a little bit about the bigger picture so it comes back again to jfk NASA and and the, the janitor you know what are you doing here sir i'm helping put a man on the moon and uh, if people can get that bigger picture and understand a little bit more and also james bloody hell people need to have a smile on their face a little bit more now i've never seen so many miserable people in airports and i've flown about 10 times in the last five six weeks I've never seen so many miserable people. Down, miserable, everything looks like it's the end of the world. Do you know what I mean? It's it's, it's our life, our time. 
And people should at least understand what they're doing with that time and enjoy it because we spend so much bloody, bloody of it in uh, a bloody time in uh, yeah, at work. Yeah, we do. We do. I mean, you've touched on a lot of points there. I think on the on the transparency piece and and let's call it, you know, selling it to the employees and everything that all comes from from transparency and you know the why you know that typical change management approach you know why are we doing this what are the benefits what's in it for you what's in it for the company what's going to change f- for your role what does it mean what additional training are you going to have you know and so on and it's that it's that sell to the people to the organization um you know to get the people on board but again, it needs it needs to make sense. There are some fa- you know fantastic initiatives. Let's uh, let's look at aircraft for a second, right? How, for example, the express integrators are, are currently reevaluating their networks, investing in um, electric aircraft that fly you know small ranges, but that gives them the possibility to open their network to provide a quicker service into certain locations. Yeah. And they're able to do that with electric aircraft. Well, that's great for the environment and that's absolutely the right approach. Drones, another example where you can access, you know, certain remote locations. That's great for the environment. You're adding value. You're having an impact on people's lives and you're having an impact on the environment. So, you know, there are some some fantastic initiatives, but again, And I've seen clear examples of this, of organizations simply doing it as a tick box exercise. And I think we have to work harder on that education of the benefit of sustainability and what it really means in the next one, three, five, 20, 30 years and why the investment has to take place now, why we have to continue to work on it. It is very, very important. And it's not just while we're at work, Chris, it's also while we're at home you know, with our friends and with our families and in our daily life. You know, there's so many things we have to be conscious of about the environment, about the the planet and so on. Uh, But again, it has to it has to make sense. And companies have to have to invest wisely. Um, And um, again, from a from a business perspective, for me, it's all it's all about the people. Yep. Yep. Yeah, no, we've touched an awful lot there, but but like I said, you know, I think a little bit more upbeat positivity, even if you're going into a tough a tough challenging period, you know, it's always better to be going in positively than than know with the old head bowed and negativity, and you know, this is the end of the world and stuff. And I just think that the the the, um, the media, the media as well, you know, and 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 also, you know, the way the journalists, I think that's one thing, you know, something I've got a lot of respect for the for the aviation journalists, you know, the, the people who do all the magazines and I mean real journalists, okay. Um, you know, they they do a good job. Do you know what I mean? You you look at some of the you look at some of the uh the, you know, the guys and girls who are doing it now in our industry and they've been doing it for years, you know, they should be applauded because when everything else is like doom and gloom. You know, they they bring facts in. They you know they they give a little bit of an upbeat message. They're always talking yeah. about innovation. They're talking about the realities of the situation. They play around, yes, with a bit of politics and a little bit of you know egos and stuff. But at the end of the day, they do a great job representing the industry. Yeah, no, I do, I do, and I think you know that has that has a huge impact because I think as a you know as a as a as a world we're getting more and more into social media, right? I mean, how how, how long do you sit there, you know, going through the LinkedIn feed or the Instagram feed or you know whatever? Everything you see, you normally find out about something very quickly. Even inside your own company, you might find it on social media out before you do internally from an internal communication. So the power of media is important. I fully fully agree with you about. Um, you know the the I would call it the unsung heroes of the air cargo media world, um, who do do a consistently great job in providing that transparency and providing, um, you know, different opinions, sometimes diverse and and as you said, sometimes, you know, punching uh, punching into certain corners. But um, you know, in general, I think I think they do a you know a fantastic job, and that's and that's definitely needed because media is very very powerful. Um, and media can can enable um, you know communities and people to be motivated and to be um, you know working in the right direction by setting those examples and having the media involved and you know and uh, and reporting on it. But in terms of the smile on the face, it's difficult times for the world. 
right? I mean, there's so many variables at play. You know, it is it is difficult. I mean, if 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 people want to smile, they just have to come and listen to this podcast, right? Because we're full of it, Chris. Well, well, that's one way of looking at it, mate. Um, but no, but but on, on on a serious note, do you know what I'm saying? It's it's. I do. I you, know, do. You, walk, you walk down a corridor or whatever, and and you know you say good morning, how are you? And then people look at you as if you just be, you, you just escaped from a from a mental institution or something. You know what's wrong with being more polite? Or the first thing that comes on the telephone, we say, "Hey, how you doing? Happy New Year to you." Boom. Yeah, I think I think your example was maybe was maybe a bit extreme, but no, I get I get the point, and that's that's also then coming back to leadership and coming back to culture and coming back to. Right people. place, right time, right people, good planning, keep the people happy. And, and all of these things, you know, contribute to that sustainability on a business level. And then you have the platform to be able then to look at different strategies regarding other areas of sustainability, which in this case, um, environment, as we've been talking about. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, my friend, we're not, we're not, we're not here. Uh, we're not aviation doctors or, or any way. Or anyway, um, even probably qualified to to tell the people who are in senior positions what they should or shouldn't be doing. But I think to end this, and we're talking about business sustainability, all the people that are in those senior positions, fair play to them because they're bringing the business, they're surviving the business, they're making things happen. Good luck to them, and all the challenges that they face on a daily basis. And you know, we've we've had experience of being in some of those positions. And I applaud everybody that's in those positions at the moment. So good luck to them. Wishing everybody a great, happy 2023. May it be one of the best, irrespective of for what reason, but hopefully it'll be effective and it'll be rewarding and we'll get an awful lot more youngsters, especially, but people coming into this industry because it's one of the best in the world, if not the best. I fully agree. I fully agree. And I fully agree with what you said about, you know, the people in I would say everybody in the industry is doing, you know, is doing their best. The leadership roles are are being executed. You see fantastic examples. You know, we've talked a lot about the pain points, um, you know, that the, that the various stakeholders in the supply chain have. But there are some fantastic examples out there. I think we're all aware of the pressures that, you know, the industry is currently under and being smart, being efficient, being on the front line as a leader, um, you know there are some there are some excellent examples out of that. So yeah, looking forward to a great tw- a twenty twenty three as well. Thanks a lot for your time, Chris, and um, we'll see we'll see where this brings us next. Yeah, yeah. All the best, my friend. Take care of yourself. Take care. Thanks, Chris.